screening for critical congenital heart disease using pulse oximetry can improve outcomes and save lives. You can simply add this to normal newborn care without too much difficulty. Most hospitals already have the equipment that they need. The goal would be for every hospital and, and birthing center in the country to screen babies. Pulse oximetry, called Pulse Ox for short, is a simple, painless, and non-invasive test that measures the pulse rate and the percentage of oxygen saturation of hemoglobin in the arterial blood. Developed in the 1970s, it has quickly become the standard of care in most inpatient units and is often thought to be the fifth vital sign. Recently, it has been recognized to be a safe and effective tool for improving detection of infants with serious heart defects before they leave the nursery. In 2011, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, along with many leading health organizations, endorsed adding screening for critical congenital heart disease, known as CCHD, to the recommended uniform screening panel. This is going to be a game changer for us. And now we're just going to have a little bit more safety for those babies when they're born so that we find them and get them to early treatment, and that will improve the lives of many babies. CCHD should be part of all newborn screenings because it is so important for us to be able to catch babies who have treatable conditions early. So in addition to the heel stick and the hearing screen that most people know about, we think that CCHD screening should be a part of that because it can really make a difference in the lives of these babies. Pulse oximetry should not replace any existing mechanisms. Pairing pulse oximetry with existing screening mechanisms, such as prenatal ultrasounds and physical examination, leads to the best outcomes. Screening for critical CHD using pulse oximetry can help us to detect babies with critical CHD early so that we can improve outcomes for these babies and potentially save their lives. My daughter, Veronica, died suddenly and unexpectedly when she was seven weeks old of an undiagnosed congenital heart defect that could have been picked up had she received screening when she was born. She appeared perfectly healthy. I had all the prenatal tests, including a 20-week ultrasound. Everything was normal, so we were under the impression that she was a perfectly healthy baby with a perfect heart. She died suddenly. They found that she had um, this uh, heart defect that could have been fixed surgically had we known about it. So when I learned about pulse oximetry screening, um, that this could have been done, it it really made me angry that she hadn't been, um, had not been screened. I hope that one day all babies are uh, tested before they leave the hospital so that no baby um, dies from a treatable condition the way my daughter did. Approximately eight of every 1,000 infants born have a form of CHD. The heart on the left represents a normal heart with normal structure and no mixing of the blue and pink blood. The heart on the right represents CCHD. The abnormal structure allows blue and pink blood to mix and lowers the percentage of oxygen in the arterial blood. More serious forms of congenital heart disease are called critical CHD. They affect approximately three per every 1,000 babies who are born. Babies with critical CHD may be well appearing with no signs or symptoms of CHD, such as murmur, cyanosis, or tachypnea. Failing to detect critical CHD while in the newborn nursery may lead to critical events such as cardiogenic shock or death. Survivors who present late are at greater risk for neurologic injury and subsequent developmental delay. It is estimated that approximately 200 babies die each year because they were not detected on time. In the past, we have been teaching pediatricians to go into the newborn nursery and to simply look for cyanosis. Cyanosis is a blue discoloration of the body, particularly the lips and the oral mucosa, that comes when you don't have a normal amount of oxygen. Well, it turns out that the human eye can't see that cyanosis until the oxygen level drops to about 80%. So there are babies from 80% up to 95%, which is the normal number, 
that the pediatrician and the nurses can't even see the cyanosis. And those babies may get discharged. Since around 1995, there have been research studies to look at the best way to improve detection for these babies, and pulse oximetry was used as a screening tool. This oxygen saturation measurement can help us to determine if, if a baby may have critical congenital heart disease. At Children's National, we have been working over the past several years to promote the use of pulse oximetry in screening. We came to Holy Cross Hospital because they have been an early adopter of screening protocols for babies. We've been doing the CCHD testing here at Holy Cross Hospital since January of 2009. Our goal is to show other hospitals that this can be done, whether it's a university setting or a community hospital setting. All infants should be screened. It is recommended that screening occur after the baby is 24 hours old to allow the transition from fetal to newborn circulation and decrease the number of false positives. Parents should be educated about CCHD screening during prenatal tours and classes at OBGYN clinics and through hospital communications such as newsletters. Parents can be referred to www.babiesfirsttest.org to learn about CCHD and other newborn screening. I tell families that it's an easy, it's a painless, and it's a very quick way to detect for the presence of CCHD in their newborn. It's important for the nurses to educate the parents prior to the screening. It's very important that parents understand that this screening test does detect many babies with critical CHD. However, it will not detect all babies who are born with CHD or critical CHD. This uh, test is a simple test that has to do with congenital heart disease. You should educate parents on signs and symptoms of congenital heart disease, such as blueness, lethargy, and difficulty feeding or gaining weight. All parents should be informed that if their infant displays signs or symptoms of congenital heart disease, they should consult with their pediatrician. CCHD screening should be done at or as close to 24 hours of age as possible. We take a measurement on the right hand and the right foot. We do it at the same time we are measuring the newborn screening. So again, easy, painless, and very simple to administer. Once the oxygen saturation is determined for both the right hand and the right foot, the screener should look at the protocol and determine whether or not the infant needs additional testing or if they pass the screening. If you are using disposable pulse ox sensors, use a new clean sensor for each infant. If you are using reusable pulse ox sensors, clean the sensor with recommended disinfectant solution between each infant. Dirty sensors can decrease the accuracy of your reading and can transmit infection. The best sites for performing pulse ox on infants are around the palm and the foot. Substances with dark pigmentation, such as dried blood on the skin, can affect the pulse ox reading. Make sure skin is clean and dry before placing the sensor on the infant. Skin color and jaundice usually don't affect the pulse ox reading. An infant pulse ox sensor, not an adult pulse ox clip, should always be used for infants. Place the photo detector portion of the sensor on the fleshy part of the outside of the infant's hand or foot. Place the light emitter portion of the sensor directly opposite the photo detector. When placing the sensor on the infant's skin, there should not be gaps between the sensor and the infant's skin. The two sides of the sensor should be directly opposite of each other. Secure the sensor to the infant's hand or foot using the adhesive or foam tape recommended by the vendor. It is not recommended to use silk tape or your hands to secure sensor placement. Some vendors use visual images, such as a star or bar, to specify which side of the sensor should be placed on top of the hand or foot. If the baby is moving, shivering, crying, or in a deep sleep, the accuracy of the reading may be affected. 
Swaddling the baby and having a parent calm and warm the baby during the reading can help. You still want the baby to be awake if at all possible. Pulse oximetry devices have different confidence indicators to ensure that the pulse ox reading is accurate. Know the confidence indicators for the pulse oximetry equipment that you are using. Remember that pulse ox readings aren't instantaneous and the reading is an average. If the oxygen saturation is 95% or greater in either extremity, with the difference of 3% or less between the right hand and foot, then the baby can go on to receive normal newborn care. If the oxygen saturation is less than 90%, the health care provider responsible for the infant's care should be immediately notified and the infant should be examined. If oxygen saturation is between 90 and 94% for both extremities, or there is a difference of 4% or more between the right hand and foot, then the test should be repeated at one hour intervals for up to two additional times. If the baby has a total of three abnormal screens, he or she should be referred to the responsible healthcare provider for clinical assessment. Babies with failing saturations should also have infectious disease and pulmonary testing and a complete echocardiogram if cause for the low oxygen saturations cannot be determined. If a screen does not give the results that we are looking for, we do multiple screens. If at the end of those multiple screens the results are still not what we want, we are in touch with the baby's pediatrician and they determine what the next course of action is. We know that 8 in every 1,000 babies have CHD. While it can't detect all CHDs, screening for congenital heart disease using pulse oximetry has proven to be a simple and effective tool that can change health outcomes and save lives. Anytime there's something that we can do easily, cost-effective, um, and quickly and really have great outcomes, we want to make sure we're doing that to help protect the babies and make sure that they're healthy. This is just another test in the panel that is for the benefit of your baby to give your baby the best chance at living a long, healthy life. We really want parents and providers to know that CCHD screening using pulse oximetry can improve outcomes and potentially save lives for babies who are born with critical CHD.